in emphatic fashion. It was a real battle of attrition early in the match between Scotland and Wales in the last eight. But it certainly picked up in quality at the back end and Stephen Maguire sealed victory in that very close match that finished 4-3. We've just seen how England got the better of Thailand by four frames to three. And China B seeing off Belgium 4-2. So Scotland through, who will join them in the title match later on today? Will it be four-time champions England or China B, who of course won this title with a slightly different makeup to the team four years ago, beating Scotland in the final? Leslie O'Scullion, who of course had the honour of officiating his first world well, final at the Crucible China B. back in the spring. Here is China B, Zhou Yulong, one of the members of that World Cup winning team four years ago in partnership on that occasion with Yan Bing Tao and Liang Wenbo who's won this title twice first in 2011 with Ding and then again with Ding most recently now, let's in 2017 England. and here comes Jack Lazowski who as we just saw made the winning break to see off Thailand captain Kara Wilson I know it's confusing so many handshakes. Good to go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame. China to be. So China to get us underway. China B. Zhou Yulong in the first of the singles matches as per usual of course two singles followed by a doubles then the reverse two singles and if necessary a second doubles and then if we go all the way the respective team captains nominate a player to contest the decisive rubber slight delay in proceedings here not quite sure what the problem is Maybe an issue with the scoreboard is there? Not too sure what it is, but uh, I think we're okay uh, now. Yes, it's a long time since anyone but a Chinese side won this. I know there was a huge 15-year hiatus between Scotland winning in '96, as you've been saying. But, uh, since then, China or China B have, have won this World Cup on every occasion. So, should England win today, there will be a change in that. Scotland are waiting the winners of this match in the final. was that it, it became two-man teams, didn't it, when we were in 2011, as opposed to three-man teams. I have to say, I do prefer it when it's a three-man team, because it kind of does show you the strength and depth of that snooker nation, but you know, this is the tournament we have. It's nice to see that it's back on the calendar, it has been the last few years. Well, I think three-man teams would have been interesting. Karen had a very, very mixed day yesterday. <laughs> you, you never get much out of him, you know, you know, emotionally you can't see what, a great deal of what's going on. I think he got a bit annoyed a couple of times or a little bit frustrated, that would be the right word, I think, with what was happening on the table. Rub to the green and all that. He's a very honest player, isn't he? He just wants, just wants to win. Adding to the mix playing for your country. But whatever, he'll be playing this shot again, that's twice now. So 
so problem sorted out, third attempt. Joe Yulon, who had a good world championship, he came through qualifying, of course, then beat Mark Allen, former Masters champion in the first round, and was 9-7 up on Ali Carter in the second before Carter came on strong in the final session. Does seem to have really matured into a very strong all-round player in the last couple of years. I have to agree with that, and I think um, that he proved something to a lot of people at the Crucible that you know he's one of the players who might be able to go deep there. He seems to have the game, and one thing about playing at the Crucible and the World Championship over the long matches, if you haven't got the right game, you will be exposed. And we've seen, for instance, Lu Hong Hao, who is extremely talented. He got absolutely well. He, he got a real hiding. He was beaten ten nil by Sean Murphy and I think he's a fine player but he's not ready clearly on the strength of that well, Jerry Long had played there before enjoyed some success was unlucky not to go further like you're saying could well have figured in the semi-final if he could have got through that match still only 21 Stroke that in very nicely and position to go with it. There were times early in his pro career where perhaps he let certain frustrations get the better of him, but his temperament seems to have become a lot more even. Yeah, I watched him in qualifying actually for the Crucible and uh, you know, there was a little bit of fire in his belly there, which you want to see actually. You want to see players who want to be back at the Crucible. If you've not played there before, you want to play there. But there's almost, I think, more of a desire to be there when you've already been there and you know what it's all about. This final qualifying round against Eden Sharif mm. is the match. He looked fired up to me. well played and was inch perfectly on that end red. It's a highly promising start actually. Thank you. 
just 17 of course when he partnered Yan Bing Tao to World Cup glory amazing. some achievement amazing wasn't it the, the way they beat John Higgins Steve McGuire and of course Dave Hendon yesterday reminded me that at the end of the match he wouldn't put his arms around John Higgins he was so overwhelmed that uh, it was almost the first person he saw and it was his opponent or one of his opponents now it's strange because I, I, we've kind of as I said earlier on we're speaking about the best young Chinese players coming through initially it was it was Yan Bingtao and Zhou Yulong and then others have come along Xiao Jintong and then we had uh, Hong Hao, as you mentioned before. Yan Si Jun, there's lots. But it's almost like we've almost gone off these two, as if to say, well, maybe they're not the best anymore. Obviously, Bing Tao, now in China, A side, he was the other one. But I'm seeing a lot of pretty shrewd match play. That, that he's capable of. I'm not sure if he knows whether he's on the bottom red or not. It must be incredibly tight. He's gone a, probably a half a ball's width too far from the previous shot. That's why. Well, surely not. Is he thinking about playing the cannon off the other red? An extraordinary shot to take on. Well, that was always going to be the issue. He was actually on reds and blacks, wasn't he? Which was always going to get us exciting. And if that had gone in and got on the black, we could have been off uh, second maximum break of the season. But it's not happening now, anyway. short of pace it's not an easy shot actually is it to get the cue with the extension in there to judge everything about it including the pace of it uh, it's a promising lead but Karen Wilson is back at the table immediately Tough pot, particularly with the extension on his cue, but having missed it, this is a good chance now for Joe to potentially clinch this opening frame. Yeah, to hit the first draw, didn't he? And there was some promise in it, had it gone in, even though he didn't finish perfectly on the black. One.
Yeah, I like, what I like about him, he's a real grafter, you know, he thinks hard. And he's, while he's very talented, there's a little bit more to his game than just talent. He's a pretty shrewd operator. I think he's surprised by how far away the cue ball has come from his next red. It flew over to that left cushion. I don't want to be that far in distance from the next ball he's trying to pot. Seven. Well, that's good. Well recovered. Rainbow. Okay, now seven. Oh, I can think of players who might have tried to keep that break going a bit longer, but he feels that his 56 point lead is worth nursing along. Just trying to protect what he's got. And he's put the brown safe now, the black's a little awkward as well. Karen de deliberately trying to get the black into play, but did so compromising the safety, and that's why he went in off. These points are starting to mount up. He can still win the frame. It will take some doing. Sometimes going in off is better than hitting the jaw of the far jaw and then coming back towards the reds. Potentially losing the whole frame there and then. Terrific pop from Joe. So, golden chance to clinch this opening frame, which is dominated. 75 left. This black and one more red should do it. Well, he didn't get the action in the cue ball he was looking for there by any stretch. It I agree, it's a very poor shot actually. There's so many other ways he could have played that, screwing it off the cushion and back out. I think it would have been a better option. Because there were a couple of reds that popped to the right middle. To finish there means that what will be frame ball, his next pot, is going to be a difficult one. that in mind it was an excellent pot to clinch the frame barring snookers Karen Wilson now needs two of them yeah I suspect he'll carry on though because the break almost certainly ends here and uh, as unlikely as it is that he'll win the frame no doubt he'll try to a very promising start from Zhou Yulong. He really got his head down here and played a good frame. So far, anyway. Very productive season for Karen Wilson last time out. Won the German Masters. Also picked up the Paul Hunter Classic and the Six Red World Championship. Now ranked in the world's top eight. 
tremendous competitor, great long potter. Yes, he did the the German double, which he was very keen to point out. Uh, probably doesn't get done very often. We're in the in Berlin, the German masters, like you said, and in Firth, the Bull Hunter Classic, which um, I think is being made into a some form of invitational this time, with not a huge prize fund either. So I don't know who will be playing in that. I suspect Kyron, if he's available, will go there. I don't know that for sure. Yes, he was quite critical, wasn't he, at the time? The fact that some of the leading lights didn't go to that tournament. Well, what I don't think Show you long wants here is all the reds just converge over the black. That's not really how he wants things to pan out with his lead. So getting them away from there, I think, would be the best option. been a very good frame from Xiao Yulong. It really has. He's looked very composed. Karen Wilson hasn't really had a look in. Yes, he's won it now. As you say, without, you know, if you see a century from the first shot, then that's obviously the perfect frame. But it's been Five. perfect in, in, the, in the terms of he's not really given any chances to Karen Wilson. It's just frozen them out for a whole frame of snooker. And it's given China B a start that China A couldn't manage earlier. Twenty one. Twenty eight. I'm sure that really is part of all, but even then, it didn't matter that much, but I suppose it's wants to keep himself in good form. We'll be playing a doubles frame frame after the next one. So for England, their captain turned over. It'll all depend on Jack Lizowski now to continue playing the way he has been for England to have got this far.
Really good stuff from Zhou Yulong to give China B the perfect start in our second semi-final here at the World Cup. A handshake from Karen Wilson who didn't trouble the scorers. China B 1-0 up.